The history of brain science is the history of happy little accidents. Horrific happy little accidents. The human brain might be the most mysterious object in the entire universe. To this day, we're still not completely sure how it works, how it creates our consciousness, our experience of life. It was even more of a mystery back in ancient times. You know, other organs in the body, you can tell. You can look at the heart, you can see. It's got chambers, it pumps blood. You get an idea of what that does. The, the lungs, they take in air. You, you get that. But the brain? Just like this mess of wrinkly jello stuff. The only way we could directly examine what different parts of the brain did was to just wait for somebody to have some horrible brain injury and then just watch and see what happened. You know, happy accidents. Over time, enough horrifying little happy accidents occurred in different parts of people's brains so that we could put together some kind of somewhat clear picture of what the different parts of the brain did and how it all worked together. And it all started with arguably the most horrific happy little accident of all, Phineas Gage and his Iron Rod from Hell. In a recent video, I talked about horrifying injuries that people actually managed to miraculously survive, and I got a whole lot of comments asking why I didn't talk about Phineas Gage. This is why, this video. I was gonna do a whole video on Phineas Gage. There, are you happy? Phineas Gage was a 25-year-old railroad worker in Vermont in 1848 when he was working on clearing a path for a railroad through Cavendish, Vermont. The way they cleared the rock was they put a charge of dynamite down inside the rock and then they would have to fill up that rock with sand and dirt, tamp it down with a little tamping iron, and then set the charge from afar. This iron rod, by the way, it was about three feet long and it was tapered at the end, so it was pointed on one end and it was about an inch and a half wide. So he's doing his job, he's been doing this probably for years and he probably wasn't you know, thinking anything of it, but one day he was tamping it down and it just happened to set off a spark that lit the charge, that blew up the rock and sent the iron rod up through his cheekbone and out the top of his head. It went clear through his head and landed like a javelin in the ground 80 feet away, that's 25 meters. That gives you a good idea of how fast this thing was traveling. Witnesses said he uh, fell on his back and convulsed a little bit, but within minutes he was talking and actually he was able to stand up and walk without any assistance. He was put on the back of an ox cart and ridden three quarters of a mile to town. He sat upright the whole time. Once he got into town, he just went to his hotel where he had been staying and just kind of sat outside waiting for a doctor to come by. But before the town doctor arrived, a traveling physician named Edward H. Williams happened to see this man sitting there bleeding in front of the hotel and was met with what has been called one of the great understatements in medical history. According to the doctor, when I drove up, he said, doctor, here's business enough for you. The rest of this doctor's account is graphic to say the least. If you have a weak stomach, I suggest you just forward to this spot right here. I'll put, yeah. You've been warned. I first noticed the wound upon the head before I alighted from my carriage, the pulsations of the brain being very distinct. The top of the head appeared somewhat like an inverted funnel, as if some wedge-shaped body had passed from below upward. So the pieces of skull had come out and formed sort of a, a teepee shape on top of his head. Wait, it gets worse. He goes on to say that he actually didn't believe Gage's story at first because obviously if something had actually happened like that to him, he would have died. He just didn't believe that he would have survived something like that. And then this happened. Mr. G got up and vomited. The effort of vomiting pressed out about half a teacup full of the brain through the exit hole at the top of the skull, which fell upon the floor. Ah! Oh, oh God! Oh, vomiting is so gross. The town doctor, John Harlow, arrived around six o'clock and started tending to Phineas, which Phineas was really lucky because Dr. Harlow had been a military surgeon, so he kind of knew how to handle stuff this bad. The records say he shaved the exit wound and then removed some coagulated blood along with some bone fragments and um, about an ounce of protruding brain matter. Uh -huh. Then he bandaged the wound, making sure to leave it open so that it could drain out any fluids that could get built up in there. And then he treated his arms because Phineas's arms had been burned really badly in that explosion. Nobody ever talks about his arms for some reason. Gage was conscious throughout the whole thing. Afterwards, he was very optimistic. He said he didn't want any friends to come visit him because he planned to be back at work in a few days. Spoiler alert, he wasn't back at work in a few days. It took a solid 10 weeks for him to fully recover and get back to something resembling a normal life. He went in and out of comatose states. He had delirious episodes where he would wind up wandering out in the streets and he had to deal with a nasty fungal infection. Two weeks after his injury, Harlow wrote this in his journal. 
Failing strength. Coma deepened, the globe of the left eye became more protuberant with fungus deteriorated infected tissue pushing out rapidly from the internal canthus as well as the wounded brain and coming out the top of his head. Cut off the fungi which were sprouting from the top of the brain and filling the opening and immediately there was discharged eight ounces of ill-conditioned pus with blood and excessively fetid. Oh, the dude had mushrooms growing out of his head. The dude had mushrooms growing out of his head. Mushrooms in his head. The exhalations from the mouth and head are horribly fetid. Comatose, but will answer in monosyllables if aroused. Will not take nourishment unless strongly urged. The friends and attendants are in hourly expectancy of his death and of his coffin and clothes in readiness. But somehow that coffin and his clothes were not necessary because he somehow pulled through. At least some version of him did. In the months after his accident, Gage's personality changed quite a bit according to those who knew him. One of them saying, quote, the equilibrium or balance, so to speak, between his intellectual faculties and animal propensities seems to have been destroyed. He is fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity which he was not previously his custom. In this regard, his mind was radically changed, so decidedly that his friends and acquaintances said he was, quote, no longer Gage. Now the extent of his personality changes are debatable because a lot of these reports came out after he died, but the fact that his personality did change after a specific injury to a specific part of the brain gave doctors at the time a new insight into how the brain works. They came to understand that the frontal lobe of the brain is responsible for higher level processing and personality. Because of this, they started paying attention to brain injuries, especially brain injuries to specific parts of the brain, and were able over time to see that certain areas controlled, say, the language center, certain areas controlled the visual center, some of them controlled the motor cortex. This is a process that's ongoing to this day. Over time, we figured out that the brain evolved throughout life on Earth from the brainstem forward. The closer you get to the brainstem, the more basic the functions are, and the brainstem itself is the very most basic function, circulation, digestion, breathing, that kind of thing. Therefore, the prefrontal cortex, the furthest away from the brain stem, is the most evolved, and it's the one that handles the most higher level processing. Now, one thing that actually doesn't get talked about that much is those personality changes seem to have gone away after only a few years. His erratic tendencies, you know, kind of went down, and after a while, he eventually moved to Chile and became a long-haul stagecoach driver. And this is actually one of the most amazing parts of the whole story. It really speaks to the brain's ability to uh, repair itself and to adjust to damage. He wasn't completely out of the woods. This brain trauma did actually eventually lead to epileptic symptoms, and that's what eventually got the best of him. He died at 36 years old from an epileptic seizure. So it would be fair that he did get killed by the accident. It just took 11 years to do it. Tough dude. The case of Phineas Gage has become one of the most well-documented medical curiosities of all time, and it's not just because of how horrific this happy little accident was. That spark that lit the charge that blew the rod through his head started a whole new wave of understanding of the human brain. So to Phineas, good show, young guy. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope that didn't gross you out too much, but Phineas Gage is a pretty popular and well-known uh, story, and it's, it's actually one that has a lot of weight to it because it led to some some medical discoveries that affect all of us today. T-shirts are available in the t-shirt store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Here's another one that you might like. There's dozens of them on there. They're designed by a really clever, talented dude from Prague named Michael. And uh, I want to thank him for sharing these with me and letting me uh, help spread the word of his genius to the world. They're definitely worth checking out. Go to answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, please check out some of these other videos. I talk about kind of random, interesting things on Thursday and more science related stuff on Monday. And if you like those, please do subscribe and you'll be first to see them every Monday and Thursday. All right, you guys go out, have an eye opening rest of the week and I will see you on Monday. Love you guys, take care.